Hello once again everyone. So I wanted to make sure we got another video this week and we're in a bit of a polearm mood so I decided to film this yesterday. So we're finally getting to it today and joining me is Jacob who's not been on the channel for a while but maybe I'll feature him more soon. I wanted to go over Mayer's quarterstaff. Now not the section that most people look at, the section with the nice art, but instead the very bottom section on his Wickner article, which I don't remember exactly which of Mayer's books this one is out of, but you can tell very quickly by the difference in art, as well as, while it does still favor thumb-to-thumb -thumb grip, it is a smaller, almost isolated series of actions that, in my opinion, are all quite nice, not just because it's just a nice, tight, not a lot of back and forth, very, very much not like the section that preceded it, but also because these actions work better with a longer stick, which after doing a lot of the shorter stick that he shows from earlier, it can be a nice reprieve, as well as works well with the training tool that most people are going to have. So I'm just gonna go through the four plays, uh, my interpretations of them, and hopefully people will get good use out of it. So, for our first action, Jacob's going to be standing right foot forward with the staff held in the long grip. He's looking to thrust uh, with a small advancement of his lead foot, as we normally do. I, meanwhile, am also going to be standing right foot forward, but I will have the staff held over my head. Now, I want to make sure that I'm not opening over my arm. I want to open under my arm so that he has a clear target. So what he's looking to do, go ahead, is just plant that into my face. So against it, I'm going to advance my left foot forward, and as I do this, I'm going to bring my arms around, sort of in a Zwerk-like motion. My right arm is going to slightly raise as my left arm comes down in order to achieve the parry at which point I may then thrust his face. Depending upon exactly what good timing you get of this, we are a little closer than we would normally be, you will sometimes end up with your stick directly at their face, which can be quite nice. But I'll show that again. He attacks. I step forward as I get my parry. Boom, there's my hit. Boom, there's my lead. And this works on both sides. I could also be over here. He does his thrust. Same exact thing. Strike, strike. Though it should be noted if you do it from your left, you will knock the stick possibly out of his hands as you get that better parry. We'll be talking more about that later. However, if he's other way around, you may wish to do it from that side. But overall, a very simple play, a very useful play. And certainly if you find yourself in a situation where you're just worried about something else, and now someone's taking a shot against you, this is a good way to get out of that situation. Okay, next play. This is where, once again, we deal with something a little bit stranger. So Jacob is now going to be in the long grip, so a sword grip, uh, with his right hand on top. And he is going to start with his right foot forward, and he's looking to pass with his left foot in as he strikes long against my head. Go ahead. Boom. Right? That's what we're dealing with. Now, this may seem kind of strange as he isn't striking out of his dominant side, but an important thing to remember is if you look at a lot of throwing of this brain blow throughout various different sources, it usually does come from the left, even in uh, non-quarter staff specific sources, such as peasant stick stuff usually the blow comes out of left side. Um, that can be a little bit of a rabbit hole to go through. Reason being is, well, a couple different things, but in general, throwing with my, uh, from my left side is going to be a little bit stronger, as well as this is going to be just a bit more controlled than this. This side opens and my staff is more likely to go all the way to the ground. This, on the other hand, rolls over my lead arm when it finishes and can lead to multiple blows. Just some, just some factors of that. Now, as for my starting position, it's vague. I just know that I need to have my right foot forward, so presumably I'm also opening up my right side for him to strike at. As he brings that stick down, I'm going to advance my left foot forward to catch between the staff, uh, between my hands. Now, at this point, what Mayer describes is we're going to go between his hands. It will depend upon what you get, right? In this case, I'm letting him fully stop before I go. If I caught him as he was bouncing, I might be able to get my stick in between. We'll see, I'll try that in a minute. But either way, I bring my stick over to thrust at his face, and then I can step back as I drive it down to the head, or alternatively, I can go between his hands. So here we go. Boom. I go up between, hit, and this time I'll move on that side. Just kind of depends upon what you get and how violent you're looking to be. A very simple play, a very useful play. Now, these next two, we're going to have a bit more of a back and forth, so I'm going to talk through the rolls as they go. So for this, this is going to be a great staff combo that Jacob's going to do on me, and then I'll show some ways out of it. So for this, I'm going to get a little closer. For this, Jacob's going to start in with an initial strike, either high or low. So if he does the high strike, he'll advance in, causing me to have to parry across. So I have to take a slightly bigger step than he does to get this wide angle. 
If you're to throw from below, he just brings his hand down, which will also cause me to have to do the same thing if I want to get a good parry. I could absolutely just bring my staff out and block that, but then I'm stuck without the ability to move. It is better if I bring my head down and move out of the way at the same time. Basically, whatever he's throwing, meet it with your own. You see this a lot in staff. Now, following that, he throws his first strike. I parry. He's going to thrust high to my uh, now open right side to cause me to have to pull back to parry. Then he's going to step away and strike me in the head. Boom, as he leaves. So it's a pretty straightforward one. You know, strike, thrust, strike. Or alternatively, strike, thrust, strike. We'll show both variations real quick. So here's the high version. So strike, thrust, strike. Okay? And here's the low version. Strike, thrust, strike. Either way, pretty good. So let's talk about how I get out of it. Now, Mayer is very vague on this. He says just parry with the whole and half staff. I, however, have some particular recommendations for good ways to get out of this combination, not by interrupting it, by, by, but by letting it play itself out. So, either way, I want to leave with a power shot, and it all depends upon how I parry that thrust. So, he throws his first strike in, and I parry. If when he brings the thrust across, I parry with my near end, so with my foremost point, then when he throws that last strike, I have the ability to bring my butt end up over in a back act style parry. If you watch the spear video, I talk about this. And then I can follow through and follow through. That one's particularly nice as you get away with using what's in front of you and then implement a new tool. However, it does require a little bit more motion on that final part. So I'll show that again. So he goes high, high, I come from below, and there's my action, there's my hit. Now the alternative to that is I use that butt stroke to deal with his thrust, which, especially if I'm being a bit more mobile, can really make a difference. So he strikes in, I parry, he strikes around, I also parry. Now this time when he's bringing this blow down, my target is right above his lead hand. I'm going to take my left foot and I'm going to step out into the triangle because I really want to be facing where his strike is going to be going. So as he starts to bring that strike in, I'm going to overbind, essentially with my strike, which opens him up, and then just plant your point right in between the hands. You see this as well in one of Mayer's earlier stuff. That one in particular, um, I find flows better if he strikes low first. This is not a guarantee, of course. You can always make this happen however you want, but if he strikes low initially, now this end is down here, so when he brings that thrust across, it makes a lot of sense for me to do one end, the other end, the other end. But if he strikes in high for the first one, then usually I'm just going to go ahead and keep this end here. So when he brings that last strike across, I then use the butt end. Either way, a power shot that allows me to deal with that final strike by either kicking it over there or suppressing it down to my dominant side. A good escape from a good combination. Now, our final action, and this is the one that, to be honest, my interpretation is probably the most, I'm the least confident on it. Not because I don't think it works, but instead just because it doesn't feature a cross step that the picture shows. But either way, this will still be a good action for you. So what we're going to see here is Jacob's going to start out of distance with his right foot forward. Now, what he's going to do is he's going to advance his left foot but not change his hands. This is to give me indication he brought himself into distance so that I can try and fill this gap with my strike. Now, when he sees that happen, he's going to strike almost like a Zornhau and overbind and suppress through as I bring this forward because he has all of that momentum built up. This is a one-for-one one what you would do with the sword, just now applied to the staff, hence it's still being a good action. So we'll show that again. So he's out of distance, he steps forward, and I go, free dinner, and he comes in and suppresses me. Now, he's not striking directly at me. He is still focusing on jamming my shoulder so that I don't get to fully come out. And then from here, he either hits me directly, or if we end up close, he, of course, has the back of my head and various things that he can wrench. Now, how do I get out of this? Well, I mean, once I feel that my staff has been taken away from me, I'm just going to sweep up into the gap that he has left and plant the butt stroke into his face. So, he steps forward. Just bring this up and over. I use my staff in between us to keep myself relatively secure. I don't have to bring it all the way up. Because he's giving me momentum, it just kind of chambers over into almost more of a flute-like position. I then have my thrust and then my step away. So... Here's that one more time, then we'll switch sides on this one so you guys can see the action as well. 
And now we'll switch sides real quick and show that same thing. Uh, one more step back. There you go. And boom. So overall, a pretty good series of actions. Like I said, even if I'm not correct on that, uh, on any of them, frankly, but even if I'm not correct, these are all great staff actions that work quite well for you. They're all very familiar actions and will, can be done with any pole arm that you're holding. Um, this feature is a good combination of striking and thrusting, so good things overall to practice. Uh, those of you that are members of the school, you'll probably be seeing these more soon. But otherwise, thank you very, very much, Jacob, for showing up to help me out with this, and hopefully you all enjoy. So, uh, I expect to see some more staff-related content soon, as I will be talking about it a lot in the coming days. But otherwise, thank you very, very much for watching. We'll go over some other techniques another time.